There we go. Thought I was Hello. the only one. I thought, did I get my weeks wrong again? Uh, I think something is has changed because that's the operator working group one, and normally we would have the regular meeting here. But oh. I think that people might have gotten yes. I think you have the same confusion that I had when I was expecting to be on the other meeting. <laughs> oh, am I supposed to be in a? Did I click on the wrong Zoom link? No, you did not click on the wrong Zoom link, but this week they put in, I think um, Amy worked along with the calendar and right now we have the SIG app delivery operator working group meeting ah. and not the regular SIG app delivery meeting. There we go. It's now next uh, week. And oh, I think yes. I might even be the reason for doing this. And that's why there's nobody here because as we talked about last week, we or a couple of weeks ago uh yeah because we had one of those weird months where there were were like second and fourth and we had a weird month where we had five wednesdays ah okay and that's, that's why that's, that's what by the way your background looks really nice are you on vacation or is this your house no i am super 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 lucky i do not take this for granted at all but i i live more full-time in california but i have a second home in central oregon so I'm a cup, you know, about 20 minutes south of Bend, Oregon, in Central Oregon, and so I am, I'm at my home, um, but it's in the woods, and yeah, I'm super lucky. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks really nice. What you can see through the windows actually behind you. So yeah, it's I'm in this really funky room. Um, the house was built 40 years ago, but it, they built this greenhouse. And it's part of the house, but it's a greenhouse, which is why you see stucco behind me. So it looks like the outside of a house. And what you're seeing is the reflection from these windows oh, okay. of what I'm looking at out here. So I'm looking out the greenhouse into the woods. Um, and you're seeing the reflection in the window back there. So yeah, it's kind of a funky room, but it's really cool. Yeah, so that's a good thing right now. As long as we have all Wi-Fi, we can work pretty much forever there. Yeah, you know, it's we. My husband and I will spend more time up here when he retires. He works in aerospace and he works on secure programs, and so he can't work remotely. Yeah. Um, and so normally I'm a, I normally I travel a lot, and so I come here on the weekends in between and stuff. I have been here for like three months out of the last five months because I can. <laughs> And so I spend like three weeks up here and then I go back to California for three weeks and it's just a nice change of scenery. I'm very, like I said, I, I feel very blessed and very lucky. So, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I'm, I'm also now in the process of choosing, uh, maybe moving to a different house because I don't need more space for uh, office work. So my office is actually rather small here. That's obviously just the virtual background, but yeah. Ah, okay. It's, 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 it's much smaller and uh, uh, I was looking for a big one. I was like, the idea, well, there's actually all these lakes right pretty, uh, pretty close to, to where I live here. And where do you live? And it's not uh, Austria. It's a city called oh, in Austria. It's in between okay. uh, Salzburg and Vienna. But I can, I can have the mountains and the lake pretty much right next or pretty close there. And the less you go to the office, the less it matters. Because even if I'm driving to the office, say, twice or three times a week, it's just a one hour drive maximum which for mm -hmm. U.S. type of commute is not that bad for Australia. Yeah. It's not ideal, but totally doable if you, if you wanted to do it. So things are definitely mixing up here. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's that explains why there's only you and I here is because we're off by week and which the is, operator yeah. group hasn't mm -hmm. been doing anything. Uh, which is still interesting because today the app delivery channel, Chris Campbell, was actually asking for the Zoom password. Zoom did something really weird with me recently where all of a sudden it requires me to admit people into my meetings and I just checked my settings this morning and that's not set. So I have no idea what Zoom is up to these days. Yeah, so yeah, I was at it we had people showing up in meetings and some really weird things going on. Yeah, yeah. So. But as I have you here, two quick updates that was interesting for you. I went through the entire document uh, on operators again. I just replied to some notes. I was expecting some already over. 
Um, I'm going to remove the uh, related technology section. I think it's just causing too much confusion. And quite frankly, as we discussed the last time, it's not really what uh, the initial charter was about. Uh, the rest of the doc, I think, can be cleaned up easily uh, also when we cut down on target audiences. There's one interesting question in there, and I think this is going to be a very interesting discussion. Should you be using operators to control non-Kubernetes resources? Mm. <laughs> I think some people will have opinions uh, on this. I'm personally struggling a bit using something like a higher level abstraction like Kubernetes to control my underlying Amazon cloud resources. I like the idea behind it, but I don't see it as an application runtime really, but that might be interesting. This um, discussion, I want to include this because one of the things about monitoring in there was there's a reconciliation loop, which doesn't exist if you control resources outside of Kubernetes, unless you implement it yourself. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, so the, the, the monitoring point in there was obviously like there's not the monitoring part of the operators on traditional monitoring. It's, it's, it's the reconcile loop that tells you whether something has changed. Right. And this doesn't exist if I monitor something outside of Kubernetes. So if I have my EC2 resources, there is no reconcile loop. But because it's not part of uh, what the, the, the standard platform capabilities provide you with. So, so maybe my definition of operator is, is a little skewed here, but to me, an operator is a CRD plus the controller, which is the reconciliation loop. Yes, but in this case, it cannot reconcile because the resources it should reconcile on are suddenly live somewhere else. Like with ACK. In, but, but why? Yeah, exactly. Like ACK. But you could extend them, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you could yeah. extend ACK in a way that, that it is in there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, the, rec the controller, okay, yeah. the reconcile loop can issue, um, you know, API calls to ACK yeah. to, to do remediation when it needs to. I mean, if you think yeah. about a cluster API, I would consider that those, you know, operators or maybe, I don't know if they're packaged officially, we, but I would consider those operators and they're controlling things like VMs and... AWS EC2 machines and Azure compute machines. So that to me is an example of an operator that is already controlling things that are not Kubernetes objects. Yeah, I think that, but I think that might be one of the discussions, whether we want to include them or not include them because it changes kind of what Kubernetes really is. Is it an application runtime or is it the platform to build automation? Ah. And you can agree it's kind of both. Yeah, I, so you, you're not using it what it's supposed to be used, but can be used for. See, this is where maybe you and I have a slightly different opinion because I am a big fan of walking around and saying, I bet you thought that Kubernetes was about scheduling containers. And then I go on to say that was just use case one. And I view Kubernetes very much as an automation, you know, cloud native, reconciliation based, you know, platform for building platforms. And so I really think of applic you know, the application, the container scheduling is only use case one. Um, which I think is fine. I think that, but that, that's the interesting discussion in there. And I think um, yeah. okay. depending on how we define it, because that, that's where it changes. I'm not saying we can't do it. I, I was just struggling doing it on the same cluster. So for me, just the example of like having an, uh, EKS cluster that is controlling its own underlying EC2 infrastructure feels kind of weird to me. Because the, the abstraction is going in the wrong in the wrong direction than there. Yeah. Because if you're getting more uh, getting more to a lower level of abstraction than to higher one. But overall it doesn't mean that you can't do it. You can use another cluster to control the other infrastructure. So that, that would work. Yeah. Might actually be a fun experiment to just use, to your point, to have a Kubernetes cluster that's not really built for container scheduling, but that just consists of the API server and it's just a pass building platform kind of cluster. Yeah. So it can't even schedule like, well, it has to schedule some containers because it has to schedule the controllers, but beyond the controllers, it wouldn't really allow to run any other workloads. Yeah, I mean, that that's quite possible. So it's all the things that you need. It's not gonna run application workloads, quote unquote, it's going to run yeah. 
all of these other workloads, workloads yeah. work there's still workloads but but it's a different type of application it's yeah that, that might be not a nice experiment. Maybe try on Twitter whether anybody ever built this before. I think somebody might have done it. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, that's a, that's a doc cleanup. I reached out to the telecom user group. I didn't hear back from them yet. I'm trying okay. to dial into the next uh, meeting. They don't seem to be very active on Slack. So I might also ping them on their mailing list. And what's the other update there? And the last good news uh, is that we, as the as the SIG, we usually also submit a talk to KubeCon, uh, which normally gets accepted because the SIG get a talk. And um, the demo application will be part of that talk. So this, I think it's going to be way more uh, like a collaborative effort where we get in there. It's more like solving application delivery problems in Kubernetes, by example. More or less, tell us your wow. problems. This is how you can solve them. And also help like with this demo application um, development. So I, I'll, I think in the next meeting I'll crowdsource this a bit more. Say, okay, this is the talk. Like obviously Harry and I, we have submitted it because the the, the sick chairs are submitting it. What should we put in there? Because everybody's complaining about the landscape. So I think it was very easy to do to get the talk submitted. Everybody's complaining about the landscape. Let's just turn it around. I'm a user. I have a problem. This is how I solve it. Yeah, I like that. Um... And so, so that that talk was accepted then. I assume? it was accepted. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, do do is the is the abs title and abstract the submission available in our repository? Yes. Or you're just going to bring it up next week. I'll bring it up next week. I okay. can also put it in there. That's a good point. Yeah. We just yeah. have to. You know how do things happen? They have the deadlines on Sunday. Oh, and absolutely. Grab something out. Absolutely. I think we've all been there. Yeah, yeah. we have it. I'll, I'll bring it up the next time. So, well, it's still that we're going to present it there, but let's talk about interesting use cases and what we pack uh, into this talk to, to get some engagement. Yeah. I also looked at the demo applications that exist. So I looked at, at Hipster Shop again, and obviously you on the side, you have Sock Shop as well. Interestingly, nobody cares about databases in the cloud native space. Yeah, <laughs> I think because that, the hipster shop does not have a database. Yeah, I think that this is this is out of convenience. I mean, people are like, "Oh, well, I'm just going to kind of ignore the stateful stuff." So, yeah, so that's uh, maybe to also talk with them. Well, shouldn't you have a database in there? And if yeah. you have a database in there, which is it going to be? Uh, schema full, schema less databases make it much more interesting for blue green deployments. Yeah, it was just interesting because I had a look at it today. So, okay, we could we could, could reuse it. Yeah, you know, obviously databases are missing. Yeah, and that's the number one problem when I talk to to customers that I get they totally get the cloud native stuff. How do I do deal with my relational databases? And right, database exactly. Upgrades? And by the way, if I upgrade it, how I cannot blue green deploy. How do I tell my environment? I can really need a blue green deploy. I cannot roll back. So there's a lot in the space that uh, yep. uh, people should be looking at. But there was a great talk. I might actually get her to speak again uh, on, on, on these topics. And I think one of the, there's also a, a uh, project out there for database upgrades that I just recently learned about. Oh, interesting. They, okay, but I think nobody's going to show up here, which I think is, uh, yeah, I think it's making the point that getting everything together in one meeting makes uh, even more sense. Yes, it does. Yeah, so I don't actually want to keep you any longer. Thank you. Okay. Are very, I see you are very busy um, okay. as well, but yeah. still used the opportunity to catch up a bit. And, no, it was um, good. It was good to catch week. up. Okay, All right. thanks. Bye. Bye.